one of the underpinnings of functional programming is that functions should themselves be what we call first class entities. They are treated just like any other type of value. So we should be able to do the same things with functions that we do with ints or doubles or strings. In order to be able to get to that level, we have to have a syntax for creating functions that can be used in, in a very brief uh, way and can pretty much go anywhere inside of our code. And one way to refer to these things is these are function literals, just like we talked earlier about how a plain integer number will be an int literal. If we put a decimal point, we get a double literal. If we put double quotes, we get a string literal, etc. We should be able to write function literals. These are often referred to as lambda expressions. And they are a feature that is not only part of all functional languages, but wind up uh, being a part of most other languages these days as well. Uh, Java has added Lambda expressions, C++ has Lambda expressions, and then of course many other languages have had them for, for quite some time. So there's something that you need to be familiar with, because basically you're going to run into them, and basically no matter what language you work with. <clears throat> so. How do we create these inside of Scala? Well, the basic syntax for a lambda expression uses a symbol that looks like this. Okay, we read this, it's an equals and then a greater than, and we read it as rocket. Uh, the, it looks like an arrow pointing off to the right, and there is a reason for that. So I'm actually going to use the horrible variable name of f, and just like our first function that we wrote when we were writing them using, in the standard way using def was to square a value, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So before the rocket, I need to put my argument list. Now these are the inputs to, to my function. In this case, I only have one. And then after the rocket, I put an expression. I If it's long, I could use the curly braces to basically group together a longer expression. If it's short, like this one, I don't need that. And just to make it clear that I can space this out however I wish, as long as Scala can tell where one thing ends and the next thing begins. Now, in this usage here, I had to tell Scala the input type. We'll see later that most of the times when you're using these lambda expressions, you do not have to specify an input type. Most of the time, that is kind of a given for you. Now that I've defined that, I can actually use f just like we would have if we had defined it using def. Okay. What if I wanted to do, let's do val sum equals, I want to have the sum of two values, an x and a y. Well, x is a double and y is a double rocket x plus x plus y and now i can call sum uh, sum of two and three sum of three much like what you'd expect the the syntax for calling it is perfectly normal here and we can have longer argument lists uh, and we just use the values over here. There is a shorter syntax for declaring these lambda expressions. Uh, it's especially short when you don't have to specify the type, but at this point, because that type can't be inferred, I would have to do it. And that is that I could redefine, so our square function could also, well, actually the square function is one where I can't use this syntax. If every argument that I have, so let's call it, let's, uh, a function that doubles things. So I pass in one argument, so this would normally be x rocket uh, x times two. Okay, so I would double it. And what I'm gonna do, because there's only one argument here, it appears once, I'm gonna replace the x with an underscore. So you can read this as something times two. Uh, Scala likes to use the underscore for its wild card. Uh, so when you could throw something in there. In this case, because I have to tell it what type the something is, the syntax is going to look like that. 
So f2 of 3 should be 6. I could also define sum this way because my two arguments appear once each in order. So this introduces the concept of the lambda expressions and the basic syntax of it. We'll see a situation where we can use it uh, in the next video.